Hello, my name is Chinedu Ellis. We're going to look at the GSM model today. Let's look at the difference between SIM 800L and SIM 900L. Um, this is 900A actually. Okay, I'm going to start with SIM 900A. What's special about this model? Yeah, when I bought it, I tried to test run the test run, the power consumption, the connectivity rate, the network sensitivity and all of that. And I discovered that when you come to SIM 900A, one, for connectivity, it has a very good connectivity, both for, both for uh, SMS, GPRS. It works fine. The SMS meaning that you can use 80 commands, you know. You know what's 80 command, right? Attention command. You can use 80 command and then you have to be ready to send SMS. You can receive an SMS and do a whole lot with that. Um, then the GPRS is what enables you to connect to the internet. Yeah, you can send data to a server online. You can query a database. You can do a whole lot with that. Yeah, I tested that and this works fine. Uh, one other thing I like about it is the power consumption. So let's talk about the power. For the power, a current greater than 1.5 amp is fine. Any current from 1.5 amp is fine. I tested one amp, it actually works with one amp also. So it's very nice. Um, one other thing I like it again is, of course, it's very easy to work with. The pins are properly labeled, there is VCC, there is ground, you have your transmitter and your receiver. You all know that, of course, working with this, you need a communication protocol called UART. You need a communication protocol called UART. Right? So, communication. That's with your hardware. If you want to interface this with your Raspberry Pi, the SCM32, Arduino, same, uh, what's it called, ESP32, ESP32 CCs, and so on. A lot of programming boards out there. So, all you just need is to understand how the UART work, and then you can work with that. Then, one thing I don't really like about this module, let's look at what I don't like. I don't really like the same. You're still using the big old-fashioned sized SIM. You know, today we are talking about nano SIM. In fact, currently we are already talking about e SIM, right? So, this is too big. I needed to get this to enable my um, my nano SIM from my phone to get into it. Yeah. Then, what other thing do I... I don't like the size. It's too big. If I want to make um, maybe a gadget, that uh, looks very small, size of a matchbox, for instance. This is too big for that design. So I needed something smaller that I can easily integrate in the case and do what I want to do. Yeah, that's about SIM 900L. Let's talk about SIM 800L. SIM 800L is a good Budo. We're going to look at what feature it has that may be an advantage to have SIM 800L. SIM 800L, number one is that in terms of connectivity, it has an SMS, it has GPRS, it has GPRS, right? It also has Bluetooth. It has Bluetooth. Yeah, that's Bluetooth. Uh, in terms of power, you're going to be greater than two amps to work with this. And in terms of voltage, it works with 4.2 volts. You know, well, sorry, I forgot to tell you. In terms of power for this in 900 is actually 5 volts. This is 5 volts, yeah. So, in 800, you need 4.2 volts. And, um, the challenge, uh, I'm going to talk about challenges soon, yeah. There's a challenge here, which I'm going to talk about. In the area of communication, 
is also yours. Do you know the meaning of yours? This is universal asynchronous receiver transmitter, right? Yeah, it's a three wire communication protocol. You have a ground, transmitter, and receiver. You can actually communicate with any other hardware, with your laptop, and so on. Then, um, one other thing, in terms of, um, yeah, sensitivity, fine, it's very sensitive to network. What is it I don't like about this uh, module? One thing I don't like about this particular model is that number one is the power, which I said I'm going to talk about. So let's look at that. It's a very big challenge. Many people have had this issue, but they don't know how to get a solution to it. Some check YouTube and they can't find a video telling them what to do. Let's look at how to solve that. Power is a very big challenge. If you want to work with this model, if you don't have a power supply that can give you 2 amps and also give you 4.2 volts, this model cannot work. Note that it cannot work. All you're going to observe is that the LED is going to be blinking in a way that it will be resetting itself. It will try to come on and it will go off. If you monitor the blinking of the LED on it, you will realize that it's resetting itself. So, how do we solve that? How do we power it? Let's look at the ways. The ways to solve this problem in SIM 800L. Number one is, you can use your lithium ion battery. You can use your lithium battery. There are some lithium batteries that are actually 4.2 volts. Yes, I've seen one before. You can get this split up and use it. If you don't have this and um, you're looking for another way, you can use uh, a power pack. Yeah. You can use a power pack plus what? A bulk converter. So all you need is you have your, your power pack here connected towards your bulk converter. This is your bulk converter and this is your GSM module. Then, sorry, I made a mistake. This is actually our power supply. This is our uh, power. And this is our Yes, sir. Just ensure that your bulk converter you set it to 4.2 volts. Then your power supply for 12 volt is fine. It's gonna work. 9 volt is also fine. Just ensure that your power pack has a current of at least greater than 2 amp. Greater or equal to 2 amp actually. Yeah. Greater or equal to 2 amps. It's gonna work. Now, there are quick cases where people will be like, what if I don't have a bulk converter? I mean, what am I going to do? Yeah, there are still other ways you can do that. If you don't have a bulk converter and you really want to power this module, let's look at the third method that has worked for me. You can do this. You can have your 5 volt supply. The third way is to use a 5 volt supply. Plus what? A diode. But it's going to be a high current diode. A high current, not just a big diode. Be careful. Or, if you don't have a high current diode, you can stack diodes together, you know, to get the high current. So if you have fiber supply, you have your fiber supply, you must make sure that it is actually greater equal to what? Two amps. Don't forget that. Then this goes towards our diode. So this goes to our diode. Right? Um, the diode con 
consume 0.7 volts. So when you minus 5 volts, minus 7, 0 0.7 volts, what are you going to have? You're going to have 4.3 volts. Yes. When you use 4.3 volts, it's going to work. Yes, I've tried this and it worked well. If you do this, you're going to get this and it's going to work with 4.3 volts. Then there is um, one other issue that people face using this model, which is the final one I'm going to talk about before I end the class for today. So let's look at uh, let's look at that now. Let's look at that now. Okay, let me just let me turn the board. I just remember this. Let's talk about the next issue that we are likely going to face using SIM 800 now. That issue is the issue of you using your TX. Let's say you have your Arduino. And then you tend to connect to SIM 800 now. You have this and you have this. This is our transmitter. These are receiver, these are receiver, and these are transmitter. Right? When you're transmitting from your Arduino to SIM 800 l you must understand that Arduino is giving out 5 volts, right? And this model cannot take 5 volts, it's going to spoil. So we're going to take care of this end. If you don't fix this end, you're going to have an issue. Since it's going to be transmitting 5 volts, we're going to be converting, it's called transistor transistor logic. We're going to be converting our TTL level from 5 volts to what? So, any voltage from 3.2 volts to so probably 3.8 volts is fine. Yeah. So, let's work with um, any value there. Let me just go straight to using what I used before. Sorry, I want to pass. Let's go straight to the method I used before, the value. So what I did is, I have an Arduino. This is my Arduino. Then I have, this is my transmitter. So in this transmitter, I'm going to pass through a resistor, another resistor, to ground. So we're using, what? A voltage divider rule here. So in the voltage divider room, at this point, it goes to, this is now my receiver end of my PS7. That's same what? 800. So this is my receiver, right? When this is sending a 5 volt, uh, we need a voltage that is lower here. The voltage I use them, I use I think I use 10 k here as a resistor, I use um, 3 k here and I was getting a very good voltage for the GSM 800. Uh, let's calculate what voltage goes in here using these parameters. Yeah, let's calculate that. If you have that, using your voltage divider rule, you have this, you have 10 k you have 3k and you have 5 volts. So, what is voltage here? Our voltage divider rule is what? V equal to, I'm going to call this R1, R2. Yeah. Um, voltage divider rule is going to be R1. R2 all over R1 plus what? R2 all multiplied by what? 5 volts. That's the formula. So, this is going to give us what? R2 10 kilo ohm over what? R1 3 plus 10. This is what? Multiplied by 5. So, what are you going to have? You're going to have you're going to have what? What do we have there? 10 
divide by 13, right? So it's going to be 10 over 13 multiplied by 5. What is this? 50 divided by 13. So we can do this. What's 50 divided by 10? What's 50 divided by 10? 50 divided by, sorry, not 10, 13. You're going to have Thank you. 